OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Good morning, everybody. Thank you for getting up early for us. We're so happy to see you. <laughs> and uh, my name is Mary Ann Perry, and this is my co-presenter, Lori Love. And we're here to share some insights from our JUICE pilot program for NEVP learners. So without further ado, let's uh, dive in. And I, I hope that we will keep you um, on schedule with this. So just to start out, we'll have Lori tell just very quickly, what is NADP for those of you who aren't familiar with it? And then I'll talk about the product that we're pilot testing called Juice. So Lori, what is NADP? Well, I'm glad you asked and I'm thrilled to be here. NADP is um, it's another way to complete your high school diploma. And in the state of New York, we have four options and NADP is one of them. And I would like to know how many of you here today are familiar with NADP. If you just want to raise your hand. Does it or look in the like chat we have, box. Oh, we have one, so it looks like we have one person who is familiar. Oh, perfect, perfect. So. Um, clients work through eight competencies, and everything has to be at 100% 100 demonstrated. And in order to enter the program, they have to have certain reading, uh, math, and writing skills. And that's NEDP in a nutshell. Cool. And um, as someone who has just learned about NEDP in the last year or so from um, Lori and others, I was amazed to learn that students really work so independently on their own, and that's become a, a central aspect of our pilot, which we'll talk about. So the JUICE product, or JUICE Readiness Library, is from Relatable Learning. Relatable Learning is a little startup company that I started after a four-year grant where we developed a new approach to help learners uh, build their basic skills and master their basic academic skills. And you'll get a peek at it during the presentation, but that's what we're piloting. As part of our program. So I'm going to um, get us into our story a little bit here and just say that um, I approached um, CASAS and uh, I think I have a member of the CASAS team also on the, on the Zoom with us, Jane, and I introduced, I met Lori and other mentors from New York through uh, Margaret Fitzpatrick and I showed them what we have and we collectively decided that it could be very useful and we decided to run the pilot. And um, Lori, some of the reasons for the pilot, if you just wanna talk about it a little bit like, um, you know, how we're gonna talk about the, the skill gaps that, that you're sure. learning at. Sure, so um, just a really quick background on the hub. New York is a very diverse state uh, we have lots of rural communities. Not everyone has an NEDP agency in their backyard. People don't want to travel up to 50 miles to even take their diagnostics. So New York State and CASAS work together to, um, to provide a hub. And it's just a place where um, people apply and then they take their diagnostics and if they meet the cut scores, then they meet with one of the three mentors and they start the program. Um, I was tasked with the um, job to send, to send remedial resources and it needed to be a program that was easy to navigate that also had the reading, math and writing component and JUICE really fit that need. So far, as it says on the slide, we have about 30, a little more than 30 learners. And um, there are also uh, 30 tutors or advisors or people working with those learners who have been given access to, to JUICE as part of our pilot. Um, a little bit about the students, Lori, who, you know, just demographics. Sure. sure. Um, the majority of the hub clients are between 25 and 55 years old, which means they've been out of the educational system for quite some time, and they may lack the confidence to do the work. Um, you probably have found also in your areas that more women than men, 
And again, as I mentioned earlier, not just New York City or the um, urban areas like Rochester, or Syracuse, Binghamton, they're also out in rural communities. They are, most of them are native English speakers. And for the hub, they study on their own. And later we'll talk about a New York agency called SEIU 1199, who is also using JUICE as their um, help for diagnostics. Cool. Um, so how are they using it? And, and we are gonna give you a little gem, demo of JUICE, but we wanted to explain how we rolled this out and um, basically, um, Lori, you're providing each learner with a little handout, right? Do you wanna just say, cause it's, it's really sure. gonna be a kind of an independent situation, but, but you are getting them started based on, is it based on their diagnostic score? Yes, yes. So um, I like these people's names. So let's just say Susie has contacted the hub portal and she wants to work towards her high school diploma using NEDP. Well, she's scheduled for a diagnostic test. She does that online, remote. And then if she doesn't quite meet those diagnostic scores, I as a point person uh, am tasked to send her what she needs. So I have her score report. I review her report and then I select the juice cat categories for her to work on. Just like you see here in the picture on the screen, I send that as a document and I highlight the areas that Susie will need to work on. Um, I send her an email with, ins with instructions, very easy, understandable instructions. Within a few weeks, I check in on Susie to see if she has started the program. I can also see how long she has spent in the program. Then when she feels comfortable, she reschedules the diagnostic. And we can talk later about how well it has worked for some of our clients. And just a quick point of clarification, in this particular pilot, students are signing in directly to JUICE, but some of you here may realize or may know that JUICE is also running a pilot with the um, California Distance Learning Consortium, and in those contexts, students get a link to JUICE inside their online course, so those are some of the options we have, but um, just wanted to make that uh, clarification in case it's helpful. So uh, what are the skills, Lori, that, that they have commonly struggled with? And then we're gonna demonstrate in JUICE how they might practice a couple of these just so people can get a sense of what's happening when they go to JUICE to try to get help. Sure, so here in the state of New York, we use the 30 series math. We are not required to use the CASAS rules math or reading. We use the CASAS rules reading for the reading diagnostic in the hub, but the math we have been able to continue to use the life skills math. And it's everything that you could possibly imagine from math measurements, which are the proportion, the area, or I'm sorry, uh, math measurements like um, area and volume and perimeter, down to percentages, um, just even to know how to change a decimal to a percent and back again. Right. And then of course, for the writing, they need everything to help them pass the writing diagnostic and to type up a three or above rubric essay. Cool. Okay. And I'm sure most of the people that would be um, with us today would be very familiar with, with these as common uh, areas where people need some help to build their skills. So I'm going to get out of the presentation for just a moment. I'm going to try to do this. Um, smoothly if I can. And, and I'm going to, uh, and let me know if you, you all can see here, but um, you should be seeing um, an image of uh, uh, the Juice Skills Library. So, you know, raise your hand or let us know if you're not seeing that. And uh, the students, this looks a little bit like the handout that Lori provided. And uh, the student can come here, they can search for the skill or they can just navigate through the topics. They can also view skills by subject. So uh, grammar was one of the problems that um, many of the students need help on. So I wanted to first just show you general navigation and juice in terms of being like a, a skill building library. And then um, once you find or the student finds the thing that they do want to work on, um, they start at the module level, which is sort of a competency level. And you'll get an idea here of, um, how JUICE works. 
So basically, um, the student can navigate and they have various forms of help available. They can listen to an audio coach as they read. Uh, they can choose a lesson to work on. They can play a, kind of a practice game to see which skills they need help on. Um, these little uh, orange slices will show me where I've been and what I've already worked on. So there's a kind of tracking and I can also go back to the library. So um, the whole philosophy of JUICE is to always present skills in a real world context. This context could be customized for career training or other purposes, but this is a general purpose context. Now, grammar is hard to come up with a problem that you have to solve with grammar, but here we imagine that um, the learner has to edit a community newsletter and make sure it's free of errors. So, um, JUICE provides audio coaching, and I'll, I'll turn this on to see if you can hear it, but... Um, Welcome to Facing Grammar Fearlessly. Do you want to refresh your grammar skip? I'll just stop there, but that's a characteristic of many parts of JUICE that students can get audio uh, narration and help. Uh, as a student looks for the skill they want to work on, a couple of things I'll point out, and I, I, I'm just going to go down to... Um, the area that we're going to do a little demo and capitalization and punctuation and um, show you that some of these things are uh, confusing to learners. You know, what's a semicolon? What's a colon? And um, these little question clues can help them find the thing that they need help on. So capital letters uh, is the one we were going to show you. So this is an example of how JUICE provides many different choices for a student to review and learn a skill. And just as a quick overview before we try one of these, um, the overview is a step-by-step -step presentation with audio narration. It's like the voice of a tutor that takes you through in a step-by-step -step way provides an example of everything that is being uh, described or presented. And um, these are pretty short. They're uh, usually about seven to 10 minutes long, but students can obviously take as much time as they need. And um, the audio narration uh, can reinforce, or if they're studying in noisy places, it can be a big help. So um, I'll just scoot down and imagine that we are working on how to understand when to use capital letters and uh, what the rules are and we're looking at the examples, we're reading all of this. We get tips along the way. JUICE provides a lot of integrated learning aids and uh, supports any kind of integrated learning aid that might be helpful to a student. It also uh, provides a lot of um, visual elements that can help uh, a student uh, kind of retain knowledge and summarize rules that they've just kind of gone over and learned. Um, uh, so those, those are just a couple of things that can be embedded in an overview. And at the end of that, um, it encourages students to go and do one of the Try It tutorials. And in this situation, they get three different contexts that they can practice capitalization skills in this case, um, time to give back a space for seniors. If you build it, will they come? It's going to be writing about a new athletic center, preparing for life, looking for the future of our schools. In a JUICE tutorial, and by the way, you can see there's a lot of choice. Uh, and one of the things we like to do is give different learners different ways to practice and learn what they need to focus on. Um, I chose, if you build it, they will come. You're writing an editorial that will inform people about a proposed new athletic center. You need to convey the essential information. So not surprisingly, we're gonna be working on which of these words needs to be capitalized. So you might be thinking, well, this looks a lot like the overview. It does, and it's another way to uh, review and learn that information, but now you have to answer questions. So always capitalize the first word in a sentence, which version is correct? Great, that was an easy one for me. Always capitalize the pronoun, pronoun I. Um, one of the things about our tutorials is we always give a lot of feedback on the incorrect answers, and then you get to try again. So the not yet philosophy is you may, got, may have gotten it wrong, but you're just not there yet. And the quality of feedback we give can help you get there. 
So that's essentially what the Try It tutorials are. That takes a lot longer for students to work through, as you can see. Um, but it's another way that they can begin if they prefer to be hands-on. They could also start by playing a short challenge game. The challenge games are the interactive and kind of game-based approach to learning that we provide. And each uh, skill includes three different challenge games. And each of these is really also a tutorial experience. And we'll try one of the games just quickly. Um, but I just wanna say that if we played the one game I'll show you to completion, we can actually play that game many times with different questions and different materials. So there's an awful lot of practice here for, for building the skill. So I like to call this whole lesson experience, it's more of a gymnasium for a skill workout because you can spend a lot of time and Lori and I'll show you a little bit about that later. So that just tells me how this game is going to work. All right, click to highlight the words that should be capitalized and are not. All right, we won't have a lot of time, but I'll just say that I think high school should be capitalized um, to place national competition. It's football team, the Fillmore Warriors. I think that should be capitalized uh, and uh, competition in Columbus. Okay, let's check it. All right, now this is important. As I said, we give a lot of detailed feedback. So I've gotten a few things wrong that I have to, figure out. And what I can do is I can go back and correct my answer. Let's check it again. And I still have a problem. Anybody want to help me? Okay, maybe these. If I get to the end and I haven't gotten it right yet, just says, you're out of time. Let me help you. Let's go ahead and see how it's supposed to go. So uh, I just can just continue practicing. Um, because we want to show you a lot more, I'm going to stop playing the game right now, but I just want to reinforce that getting it wrong should never feel like a bad experience for me. It's really a chance to learn from my mistakes and try again. So that whole philosophy of juice is important throughout. It's about encouraging the learner to keep working and trying just like a good uh, sports coach would encourage me. Uh, if you don't play, you're not going to learn how to get the ball in the hoop. So um, back to just, just for contrast, uh, Lori mentioned measurements. So this would just give you a visual on another uh, skill, a set of skills. And um, Lori, we didn't really pick one, but we could say the context here is you're, uh, you're working for a resort hotel and there are many things going on in the hotel and you're involved in figuring out. And in this particular case, you have to calculate perimeter. So I think you get the feeling of this now and you're gonna get a nice explanation of how to calculate perimeter. You're going to get to try it in several different uh, real world problem solving situations. Um, and then you're going to practice uh, by playing challenge games and see if you can uh, get the perimeter information that is needed for the real world situation you're in. So I'm going to um, stop the demo there go back and um, continue our presentation. Let's see, I think I got that right. And um, just let Lori talk for a little bit because of course, when we started the pilot, I said to Lori what I just said to you, but Lori, tell, tell the uh, folks, you know, from your point of view so far in our pilot, what, what are the benefits to the learners? Well, in my introductory email to the applicants, I do tell them that it's engaging and fun and that that really should be my middle name <clears throat> because I don't learn um, probably within the classroom. I like to learn with hands-on. Um, it has to be fun, it has to be engaging and this program fits that. One thing about JUICE, it is an independent study which really helps those who wanna enter NEDP continue to build on that independent study. Um, it supports learners at different levels, which is really important because someone may only need um, to refresh on a couple concepts and others may need to concentrate on everything in order to meet their cut scores. And as Marianne said, there's many choices to pick from, constant feedback and that they can keep trying. And above all, it builds the confidence that as you as adult literacy instructor know, 
that our clients, our students, they are lacking. Uh, they've tried maybe for years to earn their high school equivalency and can't. And this is a program that will help them build that confidence. Right. Um, and then uh, you kind of covered this, but from the point of view of the instructor, just sort of the flip side of, um, and of course, you're not in a classroom teaching at the moment, and you have many years experience doing that, so you can kind of see it from all those points of view. Sure. Um, there are just a couple here I want to um, concentrate on. <clears throat> it frees up time for lesson planning, and the other important one is that it supports learners at different skill levels. I have not been fortunate to be in any type of agency where I have one set of students that all need the same thing. I've been in classrooms where it's been the old fashioned one room schoolhouse. And I've had to find resources to help everybody. And what's really nice about this is as I work with someone else, or as you would work with someone else, other students can be working on juice. They can be doing this all on their own. Or, and I don't know if Marianne is gonna talk about this, but it can be used as a group lesson. So if you have five people in the um, classroom that need area, you can put it up on the big screen and everyone can play the games and have fun learning together. Right, no, that's, that's, that's helpful. Thanks, Lori. Um, now, what we're going to do is share a little bit of feedback and some of the results to date. It's still ongoing of our pilot. So, you know, um, we're looking forward to getting even more. But Lori, uh, tell us a little bit about what we know so far. Sure. So um, I've probably sent the program out to about 20 applicants who did not meet the cut score. This is just one of the um, testimonials that I received back. And this woman, she is my client now. She's been out of school for quite some time, as you can see her age is 54. And um, she really enjoyed the program. And um, she thinks it was awesome. The lessons were easy to understand. And she likes the fact that there was the audio coaching. Um, so she had a tutor with her. Um, uh -huh. without someone breathing down her neck and um, that she could go through the information all on her own. Yeah, and um, we're gonna show you a little bit of data about what students' choices were in just a minute. Uh, and she mentioned the challenge games and we've, we've seen that before. And um, I'll just mention during our design research and building juice, what we found is that students have very different preferences about how to learn. And some students self-identify as people that don't like to read. And those students are more likely to start with a game and just sort of test themselves and see if they maybe can do it. But in doing that, they're getting a tutorial experience. Other students feel safer starting with an overview and really going through it very carefully before they try doing it in the tutorial or the games. So um, I just think that by providing a rich set of choices and the, and the supportive feedback, we're able to accommodate a lot of different types of learners. Um, we're kind of excited, this is early days, but um, from Lori and her colleagues, there's two other mentors in New York, we, did, we have seen some success stories. So Lori, just share that. And again, we're not claiming this is the be all and end all, but it's encouraging to us. No, it is very encouraging, not only to the to juice, but also to the applicants and it, who are trying their best to raise their scores. So as you can see from this data, this is from um, SEIU 1199 in New York City. Um, most of them have raised their score at least eight points and one did 20, student number three with only nine hours in juice across two weeks. So this individual was able to raise their score by 20 points. That is phenomenal. I mean, I'm, that is to me, that's just amazing to take this program and able to spend that little amount of time and get the desired results. Um, student four is interesting. Um, they had tested the essay, 
um, took a year to review on their own without any help. And then they tried juice in about a month, they were able to get the cut score on the writing diagnostic, which is tremendous. Um, and Lori, what's your theory about that? I mean, do you think maybe a student had a lot of the basic knowledge, but wasn't putting it together? Because I think a program like Juice can help you when you go to that module page and you see all the different skills in relation to one another, you know, uh, planning your essay. We didn't look at the essay module, we can't, but it's a very, a very nice module because it shows the relationship of all the parts of writing an essay, you know, your uh, hype your uh, thesis, your conclusion, the supporting detail. I mean, um, I think I know that uh, Vivian, whose student that is, was very surprised too and very delighted. So um, there's so many mysteries to what enables people. Is it the confidence? Is it the putting it all together? Is it a combination of all those things? Well, in my honest opinion, I have seen the score reports and I am, I am not surprised because I've been in adult literacy since 2005, 2005, 2006. And these are students who have dropped out of school in 10th or 11th grade. They have not had the, um, all of the, like the distance, the uh, percentages, proportions, right. Right. and they are able to log into JUICE and get what they need. And it fits them because they are an adult student. They need that confidence. Um, they just need to have a program that will help them want to build on and learn. So yeah, I don't think it's just that they have this background. I think a lot of them do not have the background and Juice yeah. gives them everything that they need from the beginning to the end. Um. Here's, here's what we have found a little bit interesting too. Now, um, this is just sort of a graph of, I, it shows like a little over the 30 students. Now, some have just started and some have been in juice for a while. So, but what's interesting is also the colors in the graph show the choices they made about which learning uh, resource to, to work in. Um, on the left, uh, the vertical axis is the number of hours uh, a particular student right at the moment has worked in JUICE. And again, this is not meant to be a big research project or anything because these did not all start on the same day, like I said. But um, just along your, Lori's theory about it, it's about the, helping the individual get the help they need. And some people need a little and some need a lot. Um, it, it has been true in other research we've done that there is this kind of distribution across these different ways to um, learn and get a tutorial and practice. And uh, I, just, I just think that's interesting. So for people in the workshop, we're gonna stop in a couple of minutes and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this too. Um, you know, uh, I can say that these tutorials, which the color blue is the tutorials, the tutorial is a very, uh, step-by-step -step, uh, guided instruction on how to apply the skill, just like if Lori sat down side by side with me. And in fact, they're modeled on experienced teachers and exactly how they speak to a student and sh show a student. And um, I'm really impressed with um, how much time many of these students spent in the tutorials. Um, and uh, I know that the games uh, are pretty popular and I think they serve two purposes. One, they basically show you what you don't know because you find out immediately if you can't apply the skill. And, uh, but now you can go back and use these other resources. So I don't know, Lori, what, do you, what was your reaction when you saw this graph? It was amazing. I mean, this really goes in with what we are taught as adult literacy in, in, um, instructors that I do, we do, and you do. And the overview is, you know, something that, that an instructor would go over and then the student tries it and then they get to um, enhance their skills in the challenge game. So it, it's great. I don't know how many times I can say it. I just yeah, love no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> but um, Honestly, I do. I think that um, 
in the end, and I'm gonna, we can have a little discussion time for those of you who are still with us and wanna chime in. But the thing that I've taken away uh, from working in JUICE and watching uh, people work with it is that you can't learn math without doing math. But if you think you're bad at math, it's painful to do math and practice math. And what JUICE aims to do is create a positive environment where making mistakes is just what you do to find out and learn more and try again. So this whole philosophy, you're not there yet, but you're almost there, so keep going. And that encouragement aspect uh, of building confidence uh, is a known, proven um, social-emotional factor in learner success. It's the one non-cognitive factor that's been shown to uh, unequivocally be important to learners. And I think adult learners need that as much or more than younger learners do. So anyway, thank you, Lori, and thanks everybody. Mandalay, we would be happy to take questions and have a moment and people can speak up or put questions in the chat or whatever they would like. Um, that's the end of our formal presentation. So you're gonna have time for coffee before the next session. <laughs> So. Thank you so much, Marianne and Lori. I really appreciate um, everything I've, I've learned and I already knew so much about Juice. So I hope we have some other good takeaways. Um, for those that are still here, please feel free to come off of mute if you have any questions. I also popped a link into the chat um, for the evaluation. So please make sure you find time for that as well. And um, I Hi, Hi, this is Jane. Hi, Marianne and Lori. Thank you. Hi, Jane. Uh, can, Hi. You, can you tell more about the juice pilot in California? That's not yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, as part of the uh, CDLC uh, consortium, uh, a cooperative, sorry, um, juice <laughs> is available to a, a pretty big number of schools, uh, up to 25, possibly more. And we're actively piloting uh, and have been installed, Juice installs as an LTI tool. And in fact, the next session, uh, the next session uh, in the schedule, there's a presentation on getting started with Canvas that includes a little bit about Juice as well. So, um, but we are available and we would love to work with some more of the um, schools in the cooperative and, uh, you know, it, it's, that's, as I think I mentioned earlier, it's a pretty simple thing to install uh, the LTI tool in your Canvas system. And at that point, any, any, any instructor that wants to uh, do what Lori is doing would just get a link and uh, I could show you, but there's a little, when, when the teacher logs into Juice, there's a little place where you can copy the link to a particular page. It could mm -hmm. be a game, it could be a module, it could be one of the skills. And then you put it in a Canvas assignment. And um, you can also bring up Juice, uh, kind of like Lori was saying, you can bring it up in class and use it for face-to-face -face interactive, act, interactive activities. And then you can make it available to students in the same way that um, Lori and the other mentors are doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. And I'm so glad you asked because I think the Canvas, um, the migration into Canvas obviously is a very big transition for schools and for teachers. So this next session is really about those challenges mm -hmm. and, um, but there'll be a little feature about Juice too, so. Good, well, and I know that uh, the NEDP, the National External Diploma Program is expanding in California as well. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so there's more more sites coming on board and growing. So uh, I'm sure this uh, connection between Juice and NEDP will help all these students. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And and just so everybody knows, we are a very little startup company in the early stages of seeking to uh, find our place in your market and and get support uh, to continue doing it. So it's just been a fabulous experience for us working with um, the New Yorkers. <laughs> and we'd love to do the same thing with the Californias in NEDP and um, in whatever form, if they're also part of the, um, uh, the you know, uh, distance learning cooperative and, and, right. and ready to get into Canvas. Very so, good. Okay, yeah. good. Well, cool. Congratulations, good job. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, thanks very much. And we'd love to hear from other people if you guys have mm -hmm. thoughts. It's just really important for us to get feedback right now and uh, 
you know, about your reactions or your questions. We appreciate it. So thanks so much, Jenny. Uh, there's a question in the chat box. Oh, let's see. Yeah. So, so, so Roland asks, so as an instructor, I have a particular yeah. math student in mind and how do I register and set up JUICE? Um, well, Roland, I think that what would be great, and um, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to give you my email address, Marianne at Relate, let's see if I can type it right, relatablelearning.com, or you can write to us at contact us at relatablelearning.com, and we'll figure it out. Um, if you, like Lori and the New Yorkers, are not using Juice in Canvas, that's one thing I can talk to you about. If you are part of one of the Canvas pilots here in California, that's, you know, I'll, I'll talk to you about how to do it that way, but um, would love to connect. So I'll make, I'll make a note of your name too. Okay. And then Roland, if you would like, um, you can go ahead and pop your email in the chat and I can make sure that Marianne gets it. And Marianne, I think that you might need to hit enter or you may have sent a private chat to someone because I'm not seeing oh, it. Oh, I guess box. I, um, I guess I did that. I'm so sorry. I, I need to um, learn how to do this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sorry. Um, Mary, okay. I was going to give you my email. So I think I sent it to Jane. Yes, you did. <laughs> okay. Oh. Or, or contact us at relatable learning.com. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, that's what do. Love to hear about your student and, and what your needs are and, and um, where you are, you know, so it will be, will be fun. And, um, you know, what's interesting and exciting, it's challenging to be a small company at a startup pace, but what's exciting, I think, for you is that any of you who get involved with us at this stage, as Lori and NADP has, you will influence how we direct our efforts to grow and build out juice for this community. And uh, we really um, are eager to have that engagement and that opportunity to learn about what works and what the needs are. So. Very good. Yeah, okay, Roland, I see your address, so I'm gonna get that too. Mm -hmm. And I, I've already emailed it to you, Marianne. Okay, great. And I snagged it too, so <laughs> you're, you're well documented. <laughs> Not the best luck we can ask over here. Um, no, no, yeah. no, that's why so, I'm here. <laughs> My question for Jane, because uh, I know you know uh, everything probably about the NADP program. So it's growing in California. Is it growing in other states in the United States? Because I think you're in nine states right now. Yes, um, and they're just um, the latest uh, is New Mexico. And they're just, I think as of today, uh, it's all been approved and there's going yeah. to start, start training in New Mexico. So that's works. Excited that's been a um, long time coming, but it looks like that'll be a, it is viable. And now, so New Mexico is the newest state to come on board. Well, just one quick comment. Uh, it turns out both Lori and I grew up in rural areas. <laughs> I'm from North Carolina from a rural area. And, and so one thing that really fascinated me about Lori's particular role as a mentor is that she's working with folks that really may not have any community support. Mm -hmm. and our art. And I just think that's so powerful. It's one of the powerful things about NEDP is that you can support people in school settings, mm -hmm. community, you know, education settings, but also in rural settings, which is huge. It is, and it's a huge need in California. We tend to think California is just LA and, and San Francisco, big cities, but we have large swaths of the country, of the state that are very rural and it is very hard to get services so NEDP is, is one of the sites is in one of the rural areas, uh, but, but this hub concept, I think it's really an exciting way to even expand it more because with the hub, yeah. you can serve people throughout the state. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and now with the national effort to improve broadband, um, more people in rural areas will have reliable service. And, you know, I should have mentioned this, but JUICE does support mobile phones. Uh, the overviews and tutorials and all of the navigation works on a, <laughs> a smartphone. We do want to re-implement our games, which were very experimental 
But as we see now, the games really work and they engage students. So that's a future roadmap project for us to make the games also work on a mobile phone. And mm -hmm. JUICE is also accessible and supports accessibility interfaces with the exception of the games, which again, that's part of our roadmap goal is to make the games accessible and mobile. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also very important to meet uh, all the different learners needs, so. Right. Yeah, if if I can interject, I've been reading some of the um, chats and as someone who is from Western Pennsylvania in a very small village um, to now where I live in Western New York, it's really interesting to know that my um, my thoughts of California are probably the same as other people in of uh, New York that it's urban everywhere and it really isn't and um we do not where the county i live in we have no nadp um we have satellite adult literacy satellite offices right, right. and juice is just a great way for um students to be working from home on their lessons mm -hmm. so yes um <laughs> i love yeah. being in the country Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to thank Lori, um, Jane, you as well, but Lori and Vivian and Susan Takas as well, because this has just given us a tremendous a sense of confidence and confirmation that we cannot add some value. So we are very excited mm -hmm. to, to have some, you know, just a little bit of evidence here and a little bit of data, I think, has um, made a big difference for us. Yeah. So, so this is it's a, it's a challenge to make. Uh, learning exciting and relevant and applicable yes. and I think you've you're doing a great job of pulling all of that together to keep the learners engaged um, and well, well CASAS quite frankly was an inspiration um, when I learned about your competency-based approach uh, that is just such a big uh, fundamental part of, of what you do in your programs um, that's that's why I was so happy to learn about uh, CASAS and, and then about NADP. So yeah, it's great. And uh, we just want to keep going. So I'm excited about the comments and uh, hope I want to save the chat. Uh, Mandalay, if you can, uh, I just have to make sure I know how to do that. So I can. Oh, yeah. I'll make sure I'll make sure you have time to do that. And Mary okay. Hughes popped a question in, and she says, um, "How do you equate the work in Juice to any required credits, time modules complete?" Um, Mary, that's such a great question, and it's one that we want to tackle. Um, I don't know if you remember, I showed you on Juice where those little orange slices would kind of track your work. And uh, we decided when we built it initially, because of this desire to make everyone feel they have equal access to a little bit of help or a lot of help, we didn't implement it initially with any kind of judgment about how much someone had to do or you know, requirements. But uh, as we go forward, and, and JUICE can be assigned in a more formal setting, um, we are looking at the possibilities that might be, for example, using challenge games as a way to approximate mastery or readiness. So that's something that Lori has given us some feedback about as well, because of course, as a mentor there, she wants to know if somebody's ready to take the diagnostic test. And we realize our informal assessments can play a role in that. So that's kind of future research and opportunity to, um, to, to check it out. Uh, but right now we don't have a formal um, kind of correlation to what you would award or how you would rate these skills. And I mean, one thing that's interesting to us, if you want to unmute and tell us where what your perspective is, mm -hmm. is we would like to offer JUICE for career training because as I think I mentioned, we could modify the context for electrician training, plumbing training, you know, nursing training. And we thought that it would motivate those students to have their career goal context in more of these uh, lessons and uh, tutorials and examples. But um, we do want to correlate all of our modules to the CASAS competencies and the career and college readiness competencies. So um, I believe that we're at an intermediate, intermediate advanced level today, but we haven't tried to formalize that yet. And um, we would need some partners to do that because obviously 
probably you and others are more expert at that than we are, or perhaps with a group like CASAS is certainly got the expertise to help us do that. We can do an informal correlation <clears throat> and we will be working on that. Um, partly because we're getting good feedback from our pilots that will help us do that. Tell me if that was helpful in answering your question. Um, yeah, I did unmute. Oh, so yes, that, that is helpful. So it's a tool to get their skills up, not necessarily to use to give them credits towards their diploma. There's yeah. another system to do that. Okay, just clarifying yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah, and just, just as a little historical thing, it was originally developed in a four-year Department of Ed grant in order to give just-in-time kind of remedial developmental education help to adults working on an associate's degree. So that was the original premise uh, under which we developed it, but we've realized that it really has much broader application than people working on a college degree. And many of those skills are what you call high school skills or you know middle school, high school skills. So um, yeah, but thank you. Mary, I'm curious to know what you what you do and what school you're from, if, if you wanna share that. Oh, sure. So I teach at an adult school in Fairfield, California. So not quite the Bay Area, not quite Sacramento. <laughs> um, so not rural either. Um, but I teach um, high school classes and I'm just starting to also work with ESL students. So a little bit of computers, which I love working with the ESL students on computers, but also again, working with our below basic and students trying to get either their skills up for GED right. or earn their high school diploma. So right. a little mix of lots of things, not CTE stuff, but it, it is interesting your comment about that because um, we have a lot of CTE things and of course we're trying to grow that so yeah well we would you know if you want to reach out please do because we'd love to pilot with a school like yours and we are piloting in GED classes right now GED prep classes okay uh, yeah we're doing that through the canvas um distance learning consortium a uh, cooperative sorry I yeah and we're not using canvas now but i would share obviously with our administrators just so it's another yeah. another thing yeah. for them to look at with the consortium as well right right and i'm um, just curious um i i want to learn more about uh what the challenges are for programs to get into the canvas uh pilot because i i understand uh because I had a lot of experience with that in higher education. That's a pretty big leap for an organization to make. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, anybody else wanna, wanna share where you teach and, and who your students are? Um, we, just, we just love hearing about it. I know we only have a couple minutes left, so we could probably call, call this the close and thank everybody very much. Lori, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure.